In this video, I want to take a look at sigma notation. So capital sigma is used to denote a sum. And the limits of sigma tells which terms we're summing. So we think of a very basic example here. So let's say we go from r equals 1. That's a lower limit here to 3. With 3 being the upper limit. Then we're looking at the summation here of 3r plus 1. Okay. Then for this summation here, the first term is given when r equals 1. So we do 3 times 1, which is 3, plus 1. That gives us 4. For the second term here, that's when r equals 2. So 3 times 2, plus 1, that would give me 7. And then the last term here is given when r equals 3. So we do 3 times 3, which is 9, plus 1. And that gives us 10 there. Okay. Now obviously, if we want the summation here, I need to add these three terms together. So it would be 4 plus 7, which is 11, plus 10. That would give us 21. Okay. So obviously, that's a very, very basic example. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to get anything quite that easy on the exam. But it's just there to kind of illustrate how this notation works. Okay. And what you also need to recognize here is when we're looking at these types of questions, we'll often have either an arithmetic series or a geometric series. Okay. In this case here, what we've got is an arithmetic series. My first term A is 4. The difference here, D, what are we increasing by? Well, that's just simply 3. N here, how many terms do we have? In this case, it's just 3. If you also write the summation here, we could evaluate the last term, which in this case would be 10. So this isn't quite as useful when you've got a small number of terms like this. However, let's just say I work the summation then. From r equals 1 to 50 for 3r plus 1. In this case here, I'm not going to write out each individual term. We're not to r equals 50. We'll be here all day. Okay? So that's why noticing that this is an arithmetic series here is rather useful because all I can do then is find s50 then. So that's the sum of the first 50 terms. I do that as n over 2 multiplied by a plus l. Okay? And that would give you the summation there. So you don't need to sit down, write out each individual term, and then put them all into your calculator. There's no need for that. Okay? So you just need to recognize that we've either got an arithmetic series or a geometric series. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do here is just clear the screen. Because there's two other properties here that we need for sigma notation. Let's say we've got the uh, summation here. So from r equals 1 to n of a constant, let's just say 1. And what this summation here is, is just 1 plus 1 plus 1. And this would keep going up to our last term here, which obviously will just be 1. Okay. But we're doing this n times. Okay. So we do this n times here. So in that case, the actual summation is just equal to n. Okay. If that were the summation of 3 from r equals 1 to n, it would be 3n. If it was the summation of 10 from r equals 1 to n, it would be 10n. Okay? That gives you an idea of how that works. And then the final property here that we need, um, our final result that you need to be familiar with, so from r equals 1 to n of, say, r here, and this is going to be equal to n multiplied by n plus 2, and that's all over 2. Okay, so that's everything we need there to get us started for sigma notation. What we're going to do now is take a look at some practice questions. So if we start off with question one here, we're asked to evaluate the summation from r equals 1 to 6 of 10 minus r. So in this case here, this is a pretty small summation. So what we can do is just note all the individual terms and then just perform the summation. So let's just note the summation here from r equals 1 to 6 of 10 minus r. So the first term in the summation here will be when r equals 1. So that's going to be 10 minus 1, and that would give me 9. The next term here in the summation then will be when r equals 2. So that's 10 minus 2, giving me 8, and so on. So obviously the next one will be 7. One after that will be 6. And this will keep going now up until r equals 6 here. So that would be 10 minus 6, giving me 4. So we're going to do plus 5, and then plus 4. So that's the summation that we need to evaluate here. So just put this into your calculator here, and what you should find then, when you add all these individual terms together, is we get 39 there. Okay? In that case, then the summation from r equals 1 to 6 of 10 minus r is equal to 39, giving us a solution to question 1.
So we move on to question two now, we're asked to evaluate the summation from r equals one to 40 of five r plus two. Now, this question here is a little bit more complicated and the reason for that is because I'm not gonna obviously list the individual terms and then sum them up because we're going from r equals one to 40. Okay, so we'd be here for quite a while. We want a quick way of doing this. So what we need to recognize here is that this summation actually forms an arithmetic series. Okay, so let's actually show how we know we've got an arithmetic series. So let's just list the first few terms here. So from r equals one to 40 of five r plus two. So my first term here would be when r equals 1, that's going to be 5 times 1 plus a 2, that would give me 7. My next term here would be when um, r is equal to 2, so 5 times 2 is 10, plus a 2 gives me 12. My next term here would be when r equals 3, 5 times 3 is 15, plus a 2 gives me 17. Let's do one more term here. So when r is equal to 4, 5 times 4 is 20, plus a 2, and we get 22. Okay. What we can see here then, is like we said, we have an arithmetic series. So our first term here would be 7. So a is equal to 7. d here, what we're increasing by is 5. 7 plus 5 is 12. 12 plus 5 is 17. So d is equal to 5. And n in this case would be 4. Okay, so n is equal to 4. What we need here is the summation of the first 40 terms. Now, because I know we're going up to the 40th term here, we can also work out the last term, and then we can find the summation using the quicker formula. So L here, well that's going to be 5 times 40, and then add 2. Okay, so 5 times 40 plus a 2, that's going to give us 202 there. Okay, so we get 202 there for the last term. So in that case then, the summation of the first n terms is going to be n over 2, multiplied by a plus L. Okay, so we need the summation here of the first 40 terms, so S40, so that's going to be 40 over 2, and we multiply that here by A plus L, so that's 7 plus 202. So all you need to do here is put this into your calculator, obviously this is going to be now 40 over 2 which is 20, then we times that here by 209, and then 20 times 209 that gives us 5,080 there, okay? And there we have it, so that's our solution there to question two. So we move on to question three now, we're asked to evaluate the summation of r equals one to 12 of five times two to the power of r. So to begin with here, let's just think about the first few terms. So we've got the summation, r equals one up to 12 of five times two to the power of r. So the first term here in this summation would be when r is equal to one. We can see that here from the lower limit. So two to the power of one is two, times it by five, I get 10 there. My second term, that would be when r is equal to two. So two squared is four, times it by five, I get 20. My third term here in this summation, that would be when r is equal to three. So I've got two cubed, which is eight, times it by five, and I would get 40. And this would keep going on, okay? And this would go up to my last term here in this summation, and that's when r is equal to 12. Okay, so 2 to the power of 12, times it by 5, and what you should get then for the very last term in this summation is 20,480. Okay, so obviously what I want to do is evaluate all these terms here, and that would give me the um, summation here. Okay, we would have evaluated this sum here from r equals 1 to 12 of 5 times 2 to the power of r. Now, obviously, I don't want to write down all the terms in between here. What I want to do is recognize what we're actually summing up. And what I'm actually looking at here is a geometric series, okay? So in that case, my first term A is 10. The common ratio here are, well that is simply two. 10 times two gives me 20. 20 times two gives me 40. 40 times two would give me the next term here, which would be A here. Okay, so R is equal to two. And N in this case is the upper limit on sigma, our summation, so that's gonna be 12. So what I need here now is just the summation of the first 12 terms. So let's just recall the formula, the summation of the first n terms. So this is equal to a multiplied by one minus r to the power of n. And we divide all of this here by one minus r, okay? So obviously we need this now for the first 12 terms. We need the summation of the first 12 terms. So that's a, which is 10, multiplied by one minus r to the power of n. So that's one minus two, to the power of 12. 
We divide all of this here by 1 minus r, so 1 minus 2. So what you need to do here is evaluate this on your calculator. But what you should find then for the summation of the first 12 terms, in other words, giving us this summation here, is 40,950. Okay, and there we have it. So that's our solution to question 3. If we take a look at the very last question now, we're asked to show that the summation from r equals 1 to n of a r minus the summation from r equals 1 to n again of 4 is equal to 4n squared. So to begin with here, let's just consider the first summation. So from r equals 1 to n of a r. So to begin with here, let's just consider the first few terms. So the first term is given when r equals 1. So that's 8 times 1 giving me 8. The second term is given when r equals 2. That's going to be 8 times 2, giving me 16. The third term would be 8 times 3, giving me 24, and so on. And this would keep going to our very last term here. And to evaluate the last term, we just take a look at the upper limit then of sigma. So the upper limit here is n, so that's going to be 8 times n, giving me a n there. Okay. So what I've actually got here now is an arithmetic series. My first term being 8. So we'll just know that here, a is equal to 8. The difference here, d, what are we increasing by here? Well, that would be 8. Keep one up in 8, so d is equal to 8. And in this case, n is just simply n, okay? So we've got everything we need here. I can evaluate my summation because I also know the last term. So l here is equal to 8n, okay? So we can now find the summation of the first n terms. So that's going to be n over 2. And we multiply that here by a, which is a plus l. So that's going to be 8 plus 8n. Okay. And I can simplify this here. So what I'm going to get then is 8n over 2. So that's going to be 4n. And I'm going to get 8n squared over 2. So that's going to be plus 4n squared. Okay. So that's this first summation dealt with. Now we need to consider this second summation here. But this one's quite straightforward because remember, when I sum a constant like this up from r equals 1 to n, it's just going to be the constant multiplied by the n here. Okay, so what I'm going to get then, the summation from r equals 1 to n of 4, well, this would just be 4 plus 4 plus 4. Like I said, this would keep going up to the last term, which would be 4 here. Okay, and we do this n times. Okay, so that's n times there. What we get then is 4n. Okay. So in that case then, what I've got to do now is take my summation here. So that's this 4n plus 4n squared minus this summation here, which is 4n. Okay, so therefore, the summation from i equals 1 to n of ar minus the summation from i equals 1 to n of 4 that's going to be equal to 4n plus 4n squared. So 4n plus 4n squared minus 4n. Okay. Which if we evaluate this here, it's going to be equal to 4n squared. Okay. And that's exactly what we wanted to show here. We wanted to show that we get 4n squared. So that's as required. And gives us the solution there to question 4. Okay. And there we have it, so that brings the end of this video on sigma notation. In the next video, we're going to take a look at recurrence relations.